Hello, hello, hello. This is Minister Witter Ray Anderson Jr. on this May the 19th, 2021. On this Wednesday noon day about 1238 on this afternoon or this noon day. And I come to bring you the word on today. Reading it from the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. And I'm trying to I'm trying to make a topic that most preachers don't preach on today. Now there's a lot of things going on and I would day and time in this country of America and all over the world and things that we see, things that vest my spirit and, and the more real saints around and truly have the Holy Ghost, it vests their spirit, those who truly got the Holy Ghost, it, it, it more vests than, 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 than most people would ever be. When you're truly filled with the Holy Ghost, we that are, are spirit filled, the Holy Ghost always is upon us and we got Jesus in our heart, uh, even seeking for the Holy Ghost, we are vets and we are convicted about sin and all the sin that we see in the world today, sin is everywhere on a rampage. Some of the old preachers would call it sin is on a rampage. Here in America, here in the state of Texas, here all over the world, sin is on a rampage, like the old preachers would say. And a lot of the old preachers are not alive today. I mean, most of the old preachers have passed away, and we don't hear none of these good preachers like we used to hear. And even those who preach faith and healing and, and the same preachers who preach faith and healing preach against sin and, and they preach about the sin of mankind and, and they preach about the destruction coming to America because they saw it in visions and they saw it in, in dreams also like I have. I've seen the destruction of America and I've seen the destruction of Dallas, Texas. Come on, y'all. And God is soon to come. Jesus is soon to come. And it's so much things going on. These things are not normal, people. It's not normal. A lot of things going on, all kind of wickedness and evil that we see with these celebrities, or these so-called civilians, and so-called normal folks around us, and people we know, people kin to us, people not kin to us, and a lot of y'all so-called friends. And we see a whole lot of darkness, darkness. And the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the darkness, the evil powers of this world. We wrestle against evil, wicked spirits in high places. We wrestle against the evil spirits working through people. Every day and night, God told the children of God, told us children of God to put on the whole arm of God. Every day and night, we have to have on the whole arm of God in a world like this. There's a whole lot of things going on. And I'm going to address this in my sermon on today. And I'm, I may title my sermon, but I ain't got the title. I go to straight to the scriptures. The scriptures speak for themselves. God's words speak for themselves. The Apostle Paul, living way back about 2,000 years ago, who wrote some parts of the New Testament, he saw the world we live in today. He could see the Holy Ghost gave him a prediction. The Holy Ghost gave the Apostle Paul a way to prophesy and to see what's going on in our world today in our modern time. Come on, y'all. We still in the Bible day. We just in the New Testament Bible days. We in the New Testament Bible day. We just in the modern time Bible day. We living there now. But the, the Apostle Paul could see for way back 2,000 years ago about what's happening right now, y'all. He saw that we living in this damn time. And the God gave the prophet Daniel what to see what's going to happen in the last day. He said, many shall go to and fro on the earth, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, God told the prophet Daniel that in the Bible. In the Old Testament, he let him see what's going to happen in the future over here, where we at right now, in the last days and time. And we are truly living in the last days and time. And the real saints, they can see it. We can see it. The real saints, the true children of God, we see What's going on? We see that we live in the last days of time. And the devil will provoke us, try all he, they can to make us mad, and do all they can to try to make us look bad and make us angry. Those are true child of God. They want to jump on us. They want to fight us. They want to provoke us. They want to fight us. I don't want to stir at another man, but men are stir at me and I stir at those. Father, me now. What's wrong with your mind? You got to fight and stir at another man. Is something wrong with your mind? <laughs> Let a woman look at a man and follow a man. I mean, if anybody going to do it, but a man follow another man all the way to the job. You stir at another man. You follow another man. But the Bible said, but y'all go to the extreme. 
A lot of you folks go to the stream like you find it, folks. You go through the streams of finding people and stirring and stalking people like you funny, like you're a query, like you're a queer. I mean, you're like you're a funny man. I mean, I don't want no man friends. I'll tell you, unless he's a true man of God, true brother in Christ, I don't need your friendship. Unless you're a true brother in Christ and be born again and agree with the Bible like I do, I don't want your friendship unless you do. Unless you do agree with all the Bible like I do. I don't want your friendship. I don't need your friendship that you born again, brother in Christ. I don't need no fake and hypocrite and pretender in the church eyes and out. Come on, y'all. It, 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 you got to make your choice of friends, people. You can't choose anybody to be your friend. You got to be careful of your choice of the kind of friends you're going to have. Because a bad company make a good child go astray. Bad company make an old child go astray. Leave these bad companies alone. Leave these so-called bad friends alone. These query acting men, these query acting brothers on the jobs, on the streets, highway, wherever you meet them, gas station. Leave these query acting brothers alone. And you say go for your women. Leave these dikey acting women alone. Leave them dikey acting women alone in the church house, gas station, job, wherever you may be. Leave them alone. Choose carefully who's going to be your friends. <laughs> if you're a man, you want a man, choose a man friend, a true man, not no query. Too many men are too query for me in this damn time. Too many men in that query, all races of you. are too query in this damn time. And what I'm going to preach on and what my address is on my sermon today is going to relate to that. And these dikey acting women is going to relate to all that. Come on, y'all. All these dikey women and dikey sisters and the query brothers, the word of God got a word for all y'all. Come on. God got a word that will go out and not return to him void, all right. For all you queries and dikeys. Come on, y'all. And homos and on and on. Come on. Jesus said, you must be born again. He came that you be born again. You think you're born wrong. God said, be born again. We live in a land time that a lot of y'all favorite preachers don't preach on certain subjects. They need to preach on because we live in an evil, wicked world. This world is not normal. A lot of things we see on TV is not normal. A lot of things we see on the internet and YouTube is not normal. It's not normal. Y'all think it's normal. Y'all got the babies in school thinking it's normal. You, these, these grown, strange kind of teachers in your public schools. Uh-oh. Any kind of school where they at, wherever they may be. It's all kind of folks in the church house these days now. Anybody can join y'all churches these days just because they want to join. Because y'all want that money. You got, you got to have the money to keep your buildings going, whatever. So y'all let any kind of demons come in your church for the money. Come on. The Bible said the gospel is free of charge. <laughs> you shouldn't be charging for the gospel. You shouldn't be charging for the word of God. The Bible said the gospel, which is the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came into this world and suffered and died on the cross and rose again from the dead to save us from all our sins, is the good news that's free. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all with his blood for our salvation, for our sins to be cleansed and be forgiven and cleansed. He said, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He came to save us from all sin. And only through Jesus can we be saved from sin. Only through Jesus, God's son, can we be forgiven and given salvation and delivered from sin. No other way, no other religion, no other person, no other God. Only Jesus Christ, the son of God, can we be forgiven through him only. From all our sins, be saved from all our sins, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we see a lot of preachers preaching these days about a whole lot of other things. Now, there's a lot of stuff need to be preached about that a lot of preachers not preaching on in the church house. A lot of y'all pastors and evangelists and a whole lot of these people that y'all look up to or y'all in love with love so much, y'all favorite preacher, whatever. A lot of them not preaching what need to be preached. Now, they preach these good old Sunday school sermons and I call them and I call them cotton candy sermons. And then they preach them. Good cotton candy sermons, sweet sermons, goody goody gumdrop sermons. And they preach them. You know, get your hands clapping and keep you coming to the church. Come on, keep you being a member, keep you coming. And all kind of queries and loc and, and, and docs and I'm saying by saying locos and, and dykes can join y'all churches. Come on, y'all. And y'all don't preach against that sin. The, the Bible commands preachers that are truly sent by God. 
to address a lot of things that a lot of preachers are not addressing in this damn time. And I'm looking forward to addressing it right now with my sermon on today. Come on, y'all. Coming from the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. Holy Bible, Romans. Let's go to Romans, New Testament. Romans chapter 1, New Testament. Let's go right to it. And the Bible backs up its own self. The Bible is the word of God, the all-powerful word of God, almighty word of God that breaks rocks in pieces like a very powerful, all-powerful hammer. Hello. Romans chapter 1. Okay, start at verse, verse 15. I'll start there. It says, so as much, Romans chapter 1, verse 15, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, anywhere. We command to preach the gospel to the whole world. Jesus said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel. We can preach the gospel anywhere, no matter different way it is. Jail, prison, wherever, nightclub, if they want us to come preach the gospel there, wherever we are invited, wherever they let us, we can preach anywhere they let us. Come on, y'all. He said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel. Come on, y'all. Jail, house, anywhere. Come on, y'all. Hospitals, anywhere. Come on, y'all. And the next verse says, for I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith, not by works. But by faith, but works will follow. He said, work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. But you must be saved first to do that. Your faith must have you delivered, have you received Jesus for your Lord and Savior first, repent of your sins first, then work with Father for Christ. Come on, y'all. Because only what you do for Christ is going to last. So work with Father after salvation. Come on, y'all. He said, for the wrath of God. Here it is, y'all. God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, God is angry with the wicked every day. He love you, love you, love you, love you. He love all people. He love all races. He love all types of people, all colors, skin, all looks, ugly, pretty, medium, size, whatever size. He love everybody. God made us all. Jesus loved the men of the the autistic. He loved the handicapped, disabled. He loved the deformed. He made us all. Everybody that's a human. Have a soul. Everybody that's a human being may no different. They men are retarded to you people. Y'all call them men retarded. May no different. They got a mental problem, mental retarded, mentally ill, behavioral problem, or whatever y'all want to call it, behavior illness, whatever y'all want to label people, what you want to label them. The doctors diagnose and label them, and they crazy their own self. A lot of them. A lot of these doctors need to be born again. A lot of these nurses need to be born again. A lot of the judges in the courthouse need to be born again. A lot of these folks serving on jury duty need to be born again. A lot of police need to be born again. A lot of lawyers need to be born again. Come on, y'all. A lot of these people need to be born again in the, in, the, in the army. Come on. Military need to be born again. There's so many people need to be born again because so many people so many people are going down that road to destruction. Jesus said, many shall go in there at. Go where, Jesus? Down that road to destruction, Jesus said. He said, broad is that road, meaning it's wide. Very, very wide. It's so broad because so many people are walking down that broad road. Down to the place called hell. Yes, it is. It's a place called hell, and that's a place called destruction and the place called hell. And so many, Jesus said, are going that road and going thereat. Come on. But very few people is walking the narrow road. He said very few. Like the old people say, you found a traveler every now and then. <laughs> they mean you found a real saint every now and then. Ain't no problem seeing a bunch of people go to church. Oh, you see men of that every Sunday, all through the week too. Whole lot of people can go to church. All kinds of people go to church these days and feel no conviction. Continuing their sin, don't repent of their sin, don't call their sin sin or what it is. They don't say it's sin. They don't say, God, I'm sin. Forgive me. 
Save me, forgive me my sin. People don't call sin what it is because a lot of these preachers are not preaching what sin is. You got a lot of psychiatry preaching these days. Psychiatry sermons. That's what I call them. Psychiatry sermons is going on these days. Every Sunday on TV, so-called Christian networks, whole bunch of psychiatry sermons. Come on, y'all. Encouragement sermons and positive thinking sermons. Psychiatry sermons. That's what's going on on the TV, on the radio, and some, a lot of these churches. And a lot of these churches, a lot of them, your favorite preachers, your favorite pastors, y'all pastors, a lot of them is preaching what you want to hear to make you feel good. So you'll leave on Sunday and say, we had good service. What happened to them real preachers? I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost field preachers. The preacher who preached the full gospel, y'all. The preacher who preached the full gospel. And that long time ago, you don't know why I see it happening now. Folks go down to the altar. They was crying, convicted of their sin. Grown men was crying like babies, convicted of their sin because the real preachers of God, the real pastors, preached against sin. And they dealt with that sin. They dealt with that demon. Y'all talking about demon possessed. A lot of y'all got demon possessed members. Uh-uh. A lot of y'all got demon possessed members that you love, you pastors. And y'all trying to call some other preacher demon possessed or trying to call me demon possessed, whoever you want to call demon possessed. And a lot of y'all members are demon possessed. A lot of you pastors, members, demon possessed, while well, you trying to call another preacher demon possessed, like me. He's trying to call me demon possessed. Man, and you got a bunch of members demon possessed. And God knows what they're doing at home, and you don't see them. Uh uh. There's a lot of people can come to church and pretend like they're holy. Your church members pretend like they're holy. Your church workers in the church pretend like they're holy. Your other fellow deacons and other preachers that with you behind the pulpit. You pastors, they can pretend like they're holy with you and around y'all and around you. And God know what they're doing at home. God know what they're doing when they're away from the church. God know what they're doing. And God know kind of, what kind of life they're truly living. Now, a lot of women can come next school saying, go for you sisters. Saying, go for you women. Women, Come on, y'all. And y'all may like y'all don't need no husband. No, y'all need a husband. You just don't know how to treat one. Because these old women don't teach you how to treat your husband. Y'all don't know how to treat no husband. But y'all know y'all need a husband. Y'all know y'all need a husband. Y'all know y'all want a husband. Deep down in your heart. But you'll go to church play like you don't need nobody but Jesus. <laughs> y'all play like y'all don't need nobody but Jesus. And you know your flesh is hungry for a husband. Uh-uh. What did you say, preacher? Let me make it plain today. Let me make it plain on my sermon today about everybody and different thing. Because everybody else is hearing it. These babies hearing all kind of stuff y'all don't think they're hearing. Y'all children hearing all kind of stuff about sex and everything else at school, on the TV, when you're not around. They're hearing all kind of stuff that you sisters and brothers not teaching them in the church. And that you mamas and daddies and aunties and guardians or whatever, uncles not teaching them at home, grandmama, granddaddy. Y'all not teaching your children about sex. So they learn about sex at school. These school teachers constantly having sex with students. Uh-oh. Some of them get caught. Some of them don't get caught. School teachers having sex with y'all kids in the schoolhouse. Uh-oh. And they sure teaching them the wrong way. Yeah. They teaching y'all babies the wrong thing about sex. And especially when they going to have a sex with them. And y'all find out about it sooner or later or you don't. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they get caught. Sometimes they don't. It's a whole lot of teachers having sex with y'all babies in school. And they show teaching them wrong. If y'all don't teach them right in the church, they're going to teach them wrong in the streets, in the schools, or they so-called friends and buddies, bad crowds and bad company and bad friends going to teach them the wrong thing about sex. When y'all don't teach them about them at home, y'all don't teach them about the school, and you don't teach these women how to love their husband, y'all don't teach them how to be a good wife to their husband in these churches like the Bible told y'all to do. Plain and simple. Bible said in Timothy and Titus that the old women is to teach the young women how to love their husbands. And also, y'all put to teach the brothers how to love their wives. All these things are supposed to be taught in church. You're not supposed to leave it to the ungodly teachers in the public schools. Because most of them are ungodly, guaranteed. Most of these folks in these schools not no saved teachers. In these colleges and universities, not no saved teachers and scholars. Come on, y'all. Even the Bible teachers. They, a lot of them ain't no saved people in these, in these Bible colleges. It's just a history book to a lot of them. Let me make everything plain on today. Come on, y'all. Make it all plain. They're going to learn how to play with themselves. 
and everything from somebody else, and y'all not gonna be the teacher. Y'all trying to teach all this other stuff, trying to make women preach and kick their heels up, trying to call women to preach that are not supposed to preach. And they supposed to be teaching young women how to be a woman, how to be glad they're a woman. Teach the girls and the women that. Instead of you women want to be a man, trying to kick your heels up, trying to be a woman preacher, trying to be a woman uh, apostle or bishop. And God didn't call none of y'all to be that. God called y'all and told y'all to teach the young women. Teach the children. Teach the young women. That's what the Bible said. How to be a woman, how to love your husband, how to love your children. Do what the Bible say. Come on, y'all. And then people wonder why there's so many divorces. And a married car above all other places in the world look like, uh-oh, what? Supposed to be a Christian nation, y'all call it. Call America a Christian nation. America is not no Christian nation like this. Mm-mm. Let me go ahead and do what I'm going to preach. Let me, let me address these issues that most of y'all favorite preachers don't address on TV and Christian networks and at y'all churches on, on Sundays. Uh-uh, your pastors don't address. Let me address it on today. Okay, going back to Romans chapter 1. Going back at verse, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. It's showed from heaven. God showed his wrath to everything he don't like. Is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness of men and unrighteousness of men. Come on, y'all. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And you got the Bible, but you won't preach all the Bible. Come on, you holding the Bible in the church house, but you ain't preaching everything God wants you to preach and address these issues like I'm getting ready to address more and more. Come on. Homosexuals. Lesbian. Come on. Homos. Come on, y'all. Queries. And dikeys. Yeah, queerweeds and dikeys. Now, a lot of this need to be preached more and more in this day and time. We have more queers and dikes in this day and time more than we ever have. And then, and then the church house, then the movies, they, they in these uh, Walt Disney series, the Walt Disney movies, they got homosexuals, people playing homosexual cartoons, and people, you know, they voice behind the cartoons playing homosexuals. For the children to look at with Walt Disney cartoons and movies of homos and movies of dykes. Woo! And you think God going to bless America? Y'all think God going to bless America? You really think that, huh? God not going to bless America. Right away, I'm going to tell you. God not going to bless America. Mm-mm. Y'all teaching kids that it's okay to be a homosexual. Y'all teaching kids... And children, it's okay to be a lesbian. And then you got the nerve to fly off and try to talk about somebody else. Judge yourself. Judge yourself. Judgment is going to fall on a country like this. Judgment is going to fall on the USA. Judgment is going to fall on the USA. Judgment is going to fall on the USA. Judgment is going to come and going to fall on America. You hear me? God going to see to it. God going to see to it. God going to bring judgment on any country, any city, any race, any people that refuse to turn back to God and receive all the truth of God's word in the church house and out. And the Bible said judgment must begin at the house of God first. You hear me? That's the Bible. Judgment must begin at the house of God first. Then everywhere else. You hear me? And who are they living in the churches now? Anybody can come up and say they want to join. Ain't got saved and repented. Just come down the altar. That don't mean, you know that don't always mean medical people come down to the altar. They come down to the altar and still not saved. Come down to the altar, still don't want to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Come down to the altar, and they can repeat these words out to me, and don't mean it, don't feel no conviction, because you preachers don't preach conviction. This day and time, most of y'all pastors don't preach conviction. Most of y'all favorite preachers on TV, and Christian networks, or whatever, on TV and radios, don't preach conviction. So people don't feel no conviction for being a homosexual. They don't feel conviction for being a bisexual. They don't feel conviction of being a lesbian, a dyke. Because y'all don't preach no conviction for them to feel any conviction. Hello? Y'all don't preach against sin 
for them to feel any conviction. So they don't feel no conviction. And they got them in the movies. They got them in a the whole lot of movies, homosexual. Movies of lesbians. Children growing up in that mess. Walt Disney. Come on, y'all. Woo! And in the school, they saying it's okay. Give our condoms in the school. I've heard of that. I heard them give our condoms in the school. Giving our condoms here, condom there. Come on, y'all. And diseases are spreading like wildfire. And they're not making no big deal about AIDS no more. AIDS is still in the world. AIDS is still spreading, but nobody making no big deal about AIDS no more most of the time. They're like, <laughs> like they used to. All the kind of disease. Now, they're all talking about COVID-19. There's a whole lot of disease besides COVID-19 that folks don't care about in the day and time like they used to or should. Come on, like they should. Come on, y'all. Jesus is soon to come. People are dying like wildfire. Uh, there's so much darkness all over the land. I see it. People don't see everything that the prophets see. People don't see everything I see. People don't see everything the children of God see. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that the wise, talking about God's children, which is the wisest people in the world because we receive Christ and we got God's wisdom and God's word that give us more wisdom than you worldly folks would ever have. The Bible said the wise would understand, but the wicked Children of Satan, the children of the devil, will not understand because they don't see how dark this world is. This is a dark, dark, dark world. This whole country of America has gotten darker than it ever has. Dark, dark, dark America. You hear me? The more modern the world done got, the more moral America done got, the darker America done got. It's darker in these schools. Come on, y'all. Anything goes. That don't go with God. Anything don't go with God. Read the Bible. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's right. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Y'all hear me? Holiness is still right. That's why we see so much darkness in the movies, darkness in the schools, darkness coming on the news. Come on, y'all. Darkness all over the world. We, it's so much darkness, they can't put it all on the news. It's so much things going on, y'all. Killing, murder, and, and filthiness, and abomination, and all kind of sex crime, and sex sins, and sex trafficking, that they can't show it all on the news. And they're not going to show it all on the news. Come on, y'all. It's so much going on that God see, and God's such a long-suffering God. That's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ have not come back yet because God is long-suffering, giving everybody a chance to get saved because God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If we will believe in him, we will not perish, but have everlasting life. And because of that love, and God sent his son, it is up to us to receive him for our Lord and Savior. Otherwise, his coming ain't going to do us no good. Unless we receive him for our personal Lord and Savior first. Come on, y'all. His only coming was for God to be long-suffering and to give everybody a chance to be saved. And his most value of his coming is that we receive him in his salvation and what he's done for us on the cross, the Lord Jesus. And when he died for our sins on the cross, he suffered. Took those stripes on his back, 39 stripes, crowns of thorns on his head. People hit him all in his face. Come on, jumped on him, nailed his hand, nailed his feet. I he died on the cross, the Roman soldier pierced him in the side. Blood and water came out. I think the spirit person went all the way up, pierced him in the side, all the way up to his heart. Rid of the blood and water, they said, come from his heart. Jesus died of a broken heart. So the Lord know how it feels to have a broken heart. Come on, y'all. He loved people so much. The Lord loved the Roman soldier that did it wrong. He loved his own Jewish people, race of people who did it wrong. He loved the entire world that did him wrong. All our sins was on Jesus on that cross. Past, present, future, modern day and time sin. Back before Jesus was born in the form of a man, people sin. At his day and time sin, Jesus loved us so much. They say he died of a broken heart. That's why blood and water came out when the Roman soldier pierced him in the side, in the heart, all the way up to his heart. Blood and water came out because that means his heart was broken. His love, y'all talking about love. That's love. Nobody loved you like Jesus. Nobody loved nobody like Jesus. 
Hello. Nobody love me like Jesus. Nobody love you like Jesus. Mama don't love you like Jesus. Daddy don't love you like Jesus. Brothers and sisters don't love you like Jesus. Cousins don't love you like Jesus. Uncles and aunties don't love you like Jesus. Your friends, your homeboys, homegirls don't love you like Jesus. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend don't love you like Jesus. Your man friend, your woman friend don't love you like Jesus. You hear me? You don't even love yourself like Jesus. Jesus loves you more than you love yourself. Jesus loves us more than we love ourselves. He died of a broken heart. He loved all mankind. All that they did to him hurt him. Jesus know how it feels to be hurt. Jesus know how it feels to have a broken heart on that cross, y'all. And they still made fun of him, shaking their heads at him, saying, come down from the cross. You said you're the son of God. Shaking their heads, mocking him, harassing him. While he was dying on the cross, they wasn't through. Because you know the devil ain't going to be through with us saints until we call home to glory. He ain't going to stop till we call home to glory. Just like they did our Lord Jesus. Hello. Just like they did our Lord Jesus. They're not going to be through with us saints. To God call home the globe. They're going to keep on persecuting. You hear me? Talking about us. Judging us. They need to judge their own self. These sinners. Come on, y'all. They're going to hell trying to judge a saint. They're going to hell trying to judge somebody living for the Lord and seeking the Lord. And you ain't, you ain't doing that and trying to judge somebody on your way to hell. You send them in. Send a boy and send a girl. Come on, sin of women. Come on. Y'all going to hell trying to judge folks living for the Lord and seeking the Lord. Shut up. Shut up. Shut your worldly mouth up. Shut, shut your cussing mouth and lying mouth and false accusing mouth up. Shut up. Trying to judge us. Shut up. Cigarette smoking mouth. Shut up. Beer drinking, whiskey drinking mouth. Shut up. <laughs> Wine drinking mouth. Shut up. Trying to judge us. Worldly music self mouth. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your worldly mouth up and judge yourself, the Bible said, so you won't be condemned with the world on your way to hell. Sin a man, sin a woman, sin a boy, sin a girl. Hello. For this cause, Jesus came into the world to save us from our sin. And they beat Jesus. He was hurt. He knew how it feel. I'm saying it again. Jesus knew how it feel to be hurt. He hurt his feelings. Hurt his feelings, hurt him. He was betrayed by one of his closest friends. He was denied, but his friend had denied him. Thank God he repented and came back to him. Because everybody's not going to repent and come back to Jesus. Thank God for those who do. The folks not to preach about the backsliders. Thank God for the backsliders who do come back to him on time. Come on, come back to him now, backsliders. Come back to him now. And all y'all who never been saved. You think you in the belly, you ain't no belly. You going to hell, you going to the same place. You can talk about you don't play with God. You playing with your soul. Say, at least I'm not playing with God, but you playing with your soul. You playing with the devil. You and the devil still friends. I thank y'all friends. <laughs> you still going to 